Hey guys, Thundi E here and I have the battle video you've been waiting for uh, between the iPhone SE 2022 and the Galaxy A53. Now I'm walking down using the front facing cameras, uh, recording in uh, 30 frames per second in uh, 4K 30 for the A53 and 30 frames per second at 1080p for the SE 2022. Now, let's go ahead and start this video. Yes, guys, welcome back to another battle vid. And as you saw, we started off with, of course, a front facing camera comparisons between both the iPhone SE 2022 and the Galaxy um, A53 5G. Now, both devices are very peculiar. Why? Because they come in a price range that um, is within that very comfortable budget friendly price point. Now, the iPhone SE 2022 is priced at $429, while the Galaxy um, uh, A53 is priced at $449. Now, Samsung has some discounts you can do with trade-ins if you bought this early, but that's the price point for both devices. Now, let's take a look at the iPhone SE 2022. In terms of design and styling, it is very similar to the SE that came out last year. Uh, and again, it's something that is familiar for people who are looking for that. 4.7 inch display, it is not a HD display, it's a 1344 by 730. So it's a retina display, but it's not quite HD in terms of resolution. You do have, of course, uh, the fingerprint scanner in the front. So you've got um, uh, touch ID built into the device. There is no face ID. Uh, there is a front facing camera that is seven megapixels on that display. And then the rear camera on the device is a 12 megapixel camera, which shoots a 4K 60. Now this comes with 18 watt charging, wireless charging built in, which is pretty cool. And you also have um, a 2018 milliamp battery. Now, moving over to the Galaxy A53, which is our competitor here. Again, very close price point for both devices. That is a 6.5 inch device. It's got a display that is 120 Hertz. Um, it's 1080 1080p display, full HD, um, and you have something that also goes up to 808. So it's a fairly bright display for this price point as a whole. Now, this is powered by an Exynos processor, the 1280. Uh, so this will come into play when we talk about, of course, gaming specs. You do have a 5,000 milliamp battery. There is no wireless charging, but it does have 25 watt charging built into this device. And this comes with a quad camera setup, which is a 64 megapixel main sensor, 12 megapixel ultra wide, five megapixel macro, and a five megapixel depth sensor. So what does that mean in total for this device? It means a lot of things. Both devices have a lot of features packed in that you wouldn't expect in this price point. One of the unique features that separates is the the iPhone SE 2022 does have wireless charging built in while the Galaxy A53 5G does not. But the Galaxy A53 5G does have a quad camera setup while the iPhone SE 2022 has a singular camera setup. Now, before we get a camera comparison, let's talk about other things. There are, of course, dual speakers on both devices. So let's take a listen to both of them to see how well they sound. Quite interesting though. I think the iPhone might have the edge here. What do you guys think? But anyway, look, audio is a good thing and I'm glad that you actually have dual speakers on devices at this price point and not some mono speaker on there to give you some tinny sound. But what about the gaming experience, right? That's something that I care about and I like for my devices. And I, I'm pleased to see that the iPhone does pack in the A15 processor which is amazing because that processor does a fantastic job with a lot of gaming experience. And I got to check out both devices, of course, gaming with them. With the iPhone SE playing, of course, Call of Duty Mobile, I got 60 frames per second. It was standard, it was solid, and I should expect that from the A15 processor. The Galaxy A53, that is not the case. Now, this processor might not be optimized, games might not be optimized for this processor yet. So I was only able to play Call of Duty Mobile at uh, I will call it medium settings, but I was still able to get 60 frames per second. Again, not the highest settings for Call of Duty Mobile. So let's move on to PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile, again, 
the iPhone SE 2022 A15. If you're playing Ultra HD Ultra, 40 frames per second. If you're playing um, at uh, Smooth Extreme, 60 frames per second. Solid as expected with that processor. With the A53 5G, huh, you're looking at something where you can only do uh, smooth um, high, I believe, and I think that's it. So, which is a bit of a bummer there, and you're not getting the best results possible. Now, of course, we gotta check out Genshin Impact. This is where you would expect to see a lot of performance issues and performance strains. Now, the A15, I think there's been some improvements there. Uh, I was getting between about uh, 49 to 52 frames per second. Early on within my gameplay experience, I got actually up to 56. So at least it was in the high 40s to the high to the low 50s in terms of uh, frame rates for the iPhone SE 2022. Now with the Galaxy A53, it was abysmal. Let's just call it what it is, it was abysmal. The Exynos processor here uh, could only run it at low settings and even at 30 frames per second, I was clocking in under 30 uh, between uh, 20 to about 25 frames per second. Uh, a little bit higher sometimes, but it was not worth playing Genshin Impact on here. So gaming wise, the iPhone SE honestly just takes the cake. Gaming, the iPhone SE can do that, but it's a really small device. So what about battery drain? Yes, you're gonna drain battery quite a bit on the iPhone SE if you're gonna use it extensively, especially while gaming, compared to the Galaxy A53, which has a bigger battery at 5,000 milliamps. So clearly, just a size difference there, 5,000 to 2,000, you're gonna get a better experience from battery usage of the A53 5G. Now, what about the cameras? How well do they fare? Well. Let's take a look and see what you guys think and decide. Interesting with the images there. I think you find out that both devices do a fairly competent job in terms of just imagery. Kind of like what I saw uh, from both of them. Uh, iPhone does really good though, of course, with HDR, as you'd expect. Low light has to go to the Galaxy itself on that aspect. But I want to hear your thoughts. Which do you guys think? And honestly, when we look at everything as a whole though, what do you think about both devices? Do you think this is worth spending that money to get the iPhone SC at $429, or even the Galaxy A53 at $449, or do you just save up a little bit more and move on to the iPhone mini, or the Galaxy S22, or the S22 21 FE? There are a bunch of choices here. What do you guys think? Let me know what your choices are and leave those comments down below. This is Thunder E saying thank you, and always enjoy entertainment.